I first took drawing though. I took drawing for a while and then I went into painting. And after a few years of painting, then I went into sculpture. And then when I kept enjoying it more and more, I said, when I had to pick a major, I said, I got a major in art. That's polishing it. <laughs> and it's a couple of inches at a time. <laughs> and it goes on forever. <laughs> and I'm getting a callus. No, I am. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> and I put a lot of cream on it this weekend. <laughs> said, oh, I don't want callous tints. Well, you get caught up on it, you know, and you get so much satisfaction you know, that just carries you ahead. You do more and more. <laughs> and then when it's finished, you think, oh, that was worth it. <laughs> How's that going, Margaret? Good? We're all set up at the drill press now. You're going to drill it? You are. <laughs> You're going to drill that, oh. <laughs> I did some drilling a number of years ago when I was a few years into it. Uh huh. Now, with my eyesight, yeah. I don't trust myself. That was a drill. <laughs> That's much better. Yeah. yeah, that looks much better. It's beautiful. Better. Beautiful. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, mount it. I have an X here. Okay. Okay, and we're going to... I met her when I first returned to college after maybe 35 years. Uh, I had left, I had returned. And it was a little daunting to come back and I felt a little out of place, uh, a little old. And then, uh, you know, and then I met Margaret. You know, I was 60 and she's like 90. So she's been to me just an inspiration in terms of returning to my academics and just as a life lesson that you know, it doesn't stop as long as you're willing to continue. So uh, we have worked together, you know, uh, as classmates basically uh, in the sculpture studio. Her work is very, very nice. She's had, uh, she's done quite a bit obviously, you know. Uh, I just kind of hope that I can continue as long as, as she has continued, you know. Uh, and I also know her a little bit outside because we're both Staten Islanders and I run into her from time to time. So it isn't, she's not restricted just to this. I, I know for a fact that she really gets out and keeps doing things. Being in the sculpture class with Professor Weil, Professor Weil has been able to uh, sort of open my eyes to uh, other possibilities of my work. I, I, uh, in fact, uh, she was the first professor that absolutely made you name your work. You know what we'll be doing with the dust is when we epoxy your piece, oh. we're going to use some of this. Yes, okay. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. We try to collect all the dust. Yeah. <laughs> But you can really see where it is about Excellent. there. Okay. This was it. That was it, you think? Yeah, let I think let so. me just uh, pull it down. And we'll get a dowel. John. <laughs> 
Yes, yes. yes. The uh, it was the first uh, Margaret Riccardi uh, uh, scholarship. Uh, I was totally shocked when I received it. I was told I was the first recipient of it. When I graduated in um, 2011, I believe it was uh, the fall of 2011, uh, and they sent me a letter saying, you've won the Margaret Riccardi scholarship. And I says, wow, you know, I think I know that name. Margaret Riccardi, Margaret Riccardi, where, 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 where? And of course, the next day, I run into her and we're talking, I'm saying, Margaret. Margaret, oh, okay. Margaret Riccardi, oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. And she says, thank you for what? I says, oh, I, I, I got to win the first award. And she was really happy for me. I was happy that I got it. And it was, that was a lot of fun, too. Thank you, Carol. And good afternoon. It's really my pleasure to welcome everyone to the College of Staten Island's annual awards ceremony. I'm pleased to join you in honoring and celebrating the academic success of our student uh, scholarship recipients. Very, very important uh, day for the college. Michelle Lagana, Frank and Margaret Rusciori Scholarship. Carla Pisantes, CUNY Pipeline. The base was an extremely hard marble that it she, comes she from had purchased for her. Oh, but you, oh, but you, the place you ordered it from was from Vermont, but it comes from France. That marble comes from France. It's luminous Italian alabaster. When you look down on it, you can see the light. And that's what makes it beautiful. Can you see it? It's very hard to work on. It's like marble. When I go to a business meeting, finish that sentence? What? Oh, you just did that. Typical but beautiful. She paints huge, huge paintings. He gives them abstract. When he first started, he does a lot of nice work. These have. Friends' names, God or bless her. multiple <laughs> she, friends um, or family names. Has she inspired and, you in your uh, sculpting? Every day, if I don't see her here, I get very depressed. <laughs> we call a memory. <laughs> she is an inspiration. So, uh, even though you're young, and you her work is excellent. Works. Her it's work is to, far to beyond uh, a lot of work that is being done today. <laughs> Let's put it that way. She, she's got huge. Abstract painting, <laughs> very yeah. colorful, um, mm -hmm. and she's still changing and her style. You know, as time goes by, she learns different beautiful things. She does beautiful, and she's yeah. not satisfied <laughs> until it's absolutely <laughs> perfect. <laughs> right, Mom? I do not it has to be so perfect. Really, she, she's been working on this a long time. Less is always better. <laughs> it's like when you dress, you can overdress and you can overpaint. <laughs> and when you're in doubt, less. Less is more? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's what I feel when I get dressed and I put. The whole this I'll put on that and I say, wait a minute, too much. <laughs> you want one thing and it will stand out there. That's my theory. Of course other people feel, oh, it looks better when you have more. That's why. It makes it all different. Otherwise, everybody would be the same. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, 
Go ahead to wait for me. <laughs> it takes me time to move. How, how long have you lived here? Uh, 1964, we started to build the house. And you and Frank built, built yes, the house? Yes, we had it built. And uh, I designed the house of wow, what I wanted. Perfect. Of course, it had to be modified. I had it like a 10 foot deck wide. <laughs> and uh, and the, when I gave the architect the drawing, he said, it's very beautiful, but not in your budget that you, you and your husband have set up. So he modified it. Thing. Do you paint in this room also? I, or is, do you have a very early on in the paint, my painting career, mm -hmm. I tried to do it, but somehow or other I used to like going to the classroom that you get the critique. At, this, at CSI? Yes. My husband passed away in 1983 and I went full time to CSI. So I think I started in 1984. And I had Pat Pasloff, and she was very encouraging. She's the best, really the best mm -hmm. instructor you could have wanted. Mm -hmm. Partway through in your learning of how to do painting, Pat Pasloff would have you copying the masters. In that way, you could find out and see what they saw, that it was lighter when the light's coming in and darker on this side. Otherwise, if you painted it all one color, it would look as if it was just standing in the painting. This way, you get the depth, you get the shadows, and that's what you learn. And she wanted you to do the masters so gradually you would know how to put the shadows and the different effects you wanted in a painting. You kind of, when you start, it's almost like drawing. And Pat used to say, no drawing. Put down what you just, what you see and what you feel. Never mind trying to get every mark in because she wanted, she thought I should be more impressionistic. Mm -hmm. She saw that as my better mm -hmm. way of painting. This is when you, in the earlier days, not now anymore, I guess in the 60s and 70s, when you went to the town, you would see the women packing up the horses because they were going to drive out to the farm, most likely to bring food to the workers, the husbands that were out there working the farm. The grandmother sitting here crocheting and she was going to take care of the children. This was a familiar sight in the town with a special costume that they wore. And these are the musicians in Italy. They used to do mm -hmm. the town. Through the, the piazza. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that your mother and father? Yes. I was born in Brooklyn. I grew up there my, with my mother and father. And my, I had two sisters. I was the middle child. And I was the brat. <laughs> And uh, I went to school there, mm -hmm. and I met my husband because my parents came from the same town that his parents came from. And my husband came to the United States when he was 16 and a half. And what town was that where your the, the uh, parents all came uh, from? Um, Let's see, we were married in 1937, so it must have been 1935. Mm -hmm. What town did your parents 
all come from? From the town of Kalitri. Kalitri, okay, on yes. the, on the uh, east uh, coast of yes. and it Italy, was near Naples. 90 miles from Naples. And uh, my parents came here as immigrants. My father came when he was about 10 or 12 years old with his father that came first. And then they had my grandmother come a few years later after they had enough money mm -hmm. for the trip over. My husband and I were married in 1937. I moved to, we set up our home here in, on Staten Island. So what year did you move, after you got married, you moved directly to Staten Island? We came directly to Staten Island, and my mother felt as if it was Europe. She lived in Brooklyn and learned to take the train, get to South Ferry, and then get off and take the bus and get up to our home. <laughs> but. Uh, it was enjoyable. I started to make friends. Frank had a cousin that was a school teacher. Her name was Rose Ricciardi. And when Frank came here, he said to her, I want to learn English the way the people that are born in America speak it. I don't want the broken English. And he did. She used to teach him. Every evening he would go there for a couple of hours and most people never knew that he had been born in Europe, His in English Italy. His English was so good after and, being tutored. Yeah, she was excellent and, and he was a good student. <laughs> Sometimes as you're going along you change it a little because the stone makes you change. And there are certain parts of it that won't give the way you want it to give. So you do a little change and, and it works better. Every time you look at it at different angles, you get a different feeling on it. I think this is the most interesting part. This is the first time I've done a sculpture with this in it. And it's done with a tool almost like a, a, a meat tenderizer, you know, with all the uh, spokes on it. And Mary Ann had a sculpture with that, and I thought that's a nice untraced. Mm -hmm. She always knows exactly what she wants to do. And <clears throat> if the stone isn't cooperative, Margaret doesn't know about that. So, do you feel like you influence each other? Painting so closely together. <laughs> Don't you want the brush? Yeah, I want to, to do be, something. I want to be right in there with you. We'll put an easel up here mm -hmm. and a, a, a canvas, mm -hmm. and you'll have a ball. <laughs> Just put the paints on. I was going to call it splash. That it was a painting of splash colors. <laughs> And then she looked at it and said it reminded her of the northern lights because I put all the stars in there. I have to get more of them around. So I'll think about it. <laughs> I think about it when I'm home.
-hmm. During that night, I pictured the painting instead of sleeping. But then when I decide that I fall asleep, I've solved it. You solved it, and then you can sleep. <laughs> now I can sleep. Otherwise, I have to stay awake and <laughs> get it right. What is that? My palette for my colors. Mm -hmm. It's about 20 years old. I, every week I come in and I keep using it. The same palette, not like this. <laughs> and Tracy Jones calls it a sculpture by this time. <laughs> Pat Paslov used to say that even as she was painting, when she was finished, she would have one of her friends come and look at it. Because mm -hmm. you're too close to it. Right. And after a while, you don't know, is it good or is it, can I do something else? You need someone else's input. Right. <laughs> she's somebody that I will never forget, and she's so um, she's so there. She's there in the present, mm -hmm. and uh, she's just a wonderful woman. She's and she's a phenomenon. Yeah. You don't see this too often. No. I've never seen this ever before in my life that a person um, with her experience and she's still going on and there's always a future for her. There's no, there's no, well I did that already. She always needs to have something to look forward to, whether it's going away or her next project. And um, sometimes she gets a little frustrated with the stone because the stone has faults in it and she feels uh, it's never going to be perfect. So, uh, but this is, Margaret wants things perfect. And then she succumbs to the stone and she says, well, I think I've finished. And guess what? It does come perfect. <laughs> so she's great. This is the next one I'm going to do. And you make a clay model. And you shape it and you look at the stone and that's the way you create the design. Do you have the clay model? Yes. Do you have the clay? Usually it doesn't go all the way the way you made the clay model. <laughs> kind of a piece breaks off so you've got to change the design a little. But you have a base to go with, to start. If you have done everything possible to change it, and it doesn't change, move on. Leave it behind you and say, I can't do anything about it. That's the way it is. Look ahead and think of what's going to come and it's going to be better. Because, you know, life is like the stock market. Everything is wonderful, it goes up. And then it can't always keep going up. And then life gives you a setback. Sometimes it's very, very serious. You handle it the best you can and do everything you can because slowly that's the bottom and slowly it's going to go up. She would scream at me sometimes <laughs> and, but I think I learned all the tricks of painting and how to get to bring out the painting and everything from Pat. She, she was great.
How fortunate you were to have had all I had her for a long her. time. And when so she used fortunate. to talk about, uh, you know, Maggie, I'm going to retire one of these days. She used to call me Maggie. And I'd say to her, you can't retire. You've got to wait for me. And she said, you don't look as if you're going to be retiring. And I said, no, we're both going to stick with it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 